Hi, this is Shadi. Today I want to discuss with you weapons defense. A lot of people say they will never work. They will say that it will create a false sense of security and also it will put you in danger. So today I want to discuss that these principles, these fundamentals that were laid down do work mechanically speaking. You cannot deny that the body can only bend a certain way. However, it's the methodology of training and also it differs from person to person. Psychology uh, from one person to person is just not the same. So today I'm going to show you a couple of photos from a footage. Now in terms of TOS and copyright, unfortunately I cannot show you everything, but the photo itself will guide you to go and see the footage yourself. So uh, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this. Uh, there was a, a robbery attempt that was happening in a mini market and the lady that was very close range to the robber actually grabbed the knife with both hands as you can see so she was clearly in survival mode now uh, does she train i probably i doubt that she does but nonetheless she did the right thing again it's all about psychology so she was very adamant on surviving and she was very adamant on putting him away so the first thing that she did she actually grabbed it with both her hands to limit the movements as much as possible sure she's gonna get cut but it's much better than dying and from there she kept pushing him and notice how she not only pushed but also she rotated to the sides now it doesn't take a scientist to know that your fingers cannot bend to touch the outer part of your forearms that will cause a lot of pain and even injury so whatever you're holding you're just gonna let it go so even little kids know that crossing fingers and then you know ro rotating your wrist downward is going to create a lot of pain for the other child so uh, but nonetheless it's her psychology her willingness to live and just a survival instinct basically and eventually she ended up chasing him out while holding the knife herself so the photo shows you where you need to go and watch it fully again copyright and tos so Let's take a look at Goshin Jutsu no Kata of Judo. Uh, there's a gun disarm that follows the same principle. So uh, you get away from the danger with both hands and then you rotate the wrist using the barrel of the gun as a lever or the knife as a lever or the stick as a lever, whatever, whatever the ha weapon may be or happens to be. So you have a couple of techniques. This is the second one. So you either uh, lever use the leverage downward or to the side. So let's see it a little bit more in detail now. Uh, you see here he's approaching him, he patting the pockets. Push the barrel away from you or the blade away from you. And then from there rotate uh, the wrist in a way that cannot bend and it will cause pain and eventually force them to let go now the same principle was can be applied to the knife but here also to the gun notice the wrist and how the barrel of the gun was used as lever these principles were put for a reason either uh, in the 1880s when katami no kata was put or in the 1950s when goshin jutsu no kata was put now tomita said jujutsu is savage and it was from 350 years ago and it was to find a solution for a man without a sword to go up against a man with a sword so we have to understand that the the context of life back then was different and violence was far more prominent not today a lot of countries have laws and even if you do defend yourself in a way sometimes you can get into trouble back then a lot of the times was every man for himself so he was talking about this to dislocate the arm and dis, uh, disarm the sword and rendering someone unconscious. Now, these people that put the foundation of these types of techniques of disarms that we still see today, I highly doubt that they just did it without actually facing these situations themselves and hence why they had to develop them in the first place. Again, it's all in psychology and the methodology of training. So to say that to train it just like you saw the old man doing it in the kata demonstration is never enough. Back then, they did a lot of life drilling. If you read Jigoro Kano's way of describing the kata, you would think that he's talking about something else. And 
Another thing is psychology. When you want to live, you want to live. Now, I'm not saying these techniques are picture perfect and it's going to come out looking that nice as you saw in those demonstrations. It's going to look ugly. But at the same time, what are you going to do? Nothing. A lot of people say, oh, just run away. Give him your wallet. Sometimes they don't want your wallet. Sometimes your child is with you. Sometimes your wife or your husband are with you. What are you going to do? Nothing. Again, ask yourself this question. That's why I'm in favor of not only training these, but also training a lot of sparring. Sparring will easily help your mind adjust in the times of turmoil and in the times of stress. A lot of us have been doing this for years to the point where it's become second nature, but to the person doing it or does not know what randori is and then teach them a thousand techniques, they will just crumble under stress. So again, psychology is critical and randori and a lot of training is very important again ask yourself if your child is with you and someone is pointing the knife at you would you do nothing would you just run away and uh, just completely collapse in your mind and saying this will never work and it's a knife i can never do anything no you try your best you're gonna get hurt but better get hurt than dying or having your child or your partner see you get or get traumatized basically so I do believe these techniques hold a lot of merit, but it's the way that we go about them that's very wrong. There is obvious, there is a lot of functional training about them. There is pages and pages on Instagram that show that the two on one always grabbing with both hands and then blocking that hand that's holding the knife. There's plenty of them. I'll try to find a couple of pages and share them in the comments below. So uh, to say that it knife defense is going to give you a false sense of security etc etc you don't know every fight is different i can go up against a boxer and just lose does that mean that judo suddenly doesn't work no every fight is different you're gonna get hurt or you're gonna come out very uh, successful every warrior in the in the past and even now they know that they can come back home alive or they can just come back dead and it's the same nothing is guaranteed to anyone but to mentally just give up and say not none of it will work and i'm just gonna run away and sometimes you can't run away and sometimes they don't want your wallet so what are you gonna do again nothing that's not the way to go about it in my opinion so studying the fundamentals of these techniques and drilling them rigorously is the way to go but to say none of it work and just appeal to futility is never the answer so if you have anything to add please let me know down below also consider supporting me on patreon for exclusive content your support would mean greatly this was shady and thank you for listening